This is LA Late. From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big evening of Evenings LA as the President of the United States arrives in Glasgow, Scotland, and he's met with your first single check update of 2021. In this recording, we go over the incredible news about your recon tonight as the President heads to Glasgow, Scotland with the recon and the Loch Ness Monster. And his name <laughs> is the Senator from West Virginia. We'll go over the latest details as Joe Manchin shocks Americans tonight. And he says, what recon? I'm not doing that darn recon. What is going on? In this recording, we'll go over the breaking news direct from Santa Monica, California, as a deal will be happening. But when? Joe Manchin seems to suggest maybe it's not happening. I'll explain the latest details. Block the vote. Time to block the road again, because guess who wants to get the road recon derailed and the roads and bridges starting? Jalapal? No way. 1.75 is the price is right, but Joe Manchin, no price is right. What's going on? Programs in, programs out. The latest details. We started great before the Loch Ness Monster came to have our lunch. Debt forgiveness. More debt could be forgiven across the board. And then the big exciting details of that cola raise. So much across the board in tonight's recording. I'm here in Santa Monica, California. The president is in Glasgow, Scotland. But the big question across the board is what happens next in this incredible recon process. Americans waiting to see clarity from the president of the United States for the recon. I'll have clarity for you tonight. It's a big recording with the president in Glasgow, me in Santa Monica and the Loch Ness Monster. Well, there's another one in Kentucky as well. It's with some lobsters as well. It's a big evening and it starts very soon. Really, you know, it's time delay because of international time. No, it starts right now. having a beautiful evening and hope hope the weather is good where you are it has been chilly like scotland here in santa Monica, california is a deal happening tonight we examine the statement from joe manchin and why broadcast media tried to spin the quote other ways block the road it's heating up and it's not because of Pelosi. it's because of pramila what tonight the price is right 1.75 but more items are adding to the recon we start so great today but then things got very dicey later in the day as joe manson called a press conference because he doesn't get enough attention i like the santa monica surf so here's some santa monica surf and some student loan debt could be forgiven and then the big money for that cola raise with his symbols right behind that as well it's a big evening you never seen a recording like this i'm sort of overwhelmed how to make this recording and this is eating to highlight. So subscribe. 400,000 subscribers to YouTube record because of a reason. It's days like this where you actually have to pull the quote, read the quote, re-examine the quote, and say, that's not what Joe Manchin said. <laughs> Broadcast media trying to spin this story to make it look like a Kardashian fight. I know what they're doing. Like this video, two, three thousand likes, and consider becoming a member. Let's go over the incredible details right now. A $3.5 trillion recon passed a House subcommittee three weeks ago. And that House subcommittee recon now being reduced to a smaller price point, but still paying the viewers of this channel upwards of about $15,000. Yes, the great news is that when this recon is done, it'll pay viewers this channel on average about $15,000. Single individuals, people married, people without married, uh, people without a marriage, people without a child, people without Joe Manchin at their... Uh, <laughs> At their uh, at their lobster bass, yes, it's fifteen thousand dollars across the board. It's clustered across three clusters of checks with three add-ons. Tonight, we're going to go over the details of where those clusters are and something new tonight. I'm going to go over how those provisions may have been changed by Joe Manchin. We call these the Joe Manchin concessions. And that is starting right now. Here we go. Hazard pay and the elder care. $4,000 of elder care got in there. $4,000 for children care got in there. Pass is still in there. Hazard pay one year. The earning income tax credit for one more year for those essential workers. Then they got the money in there for the home repairs. Great news if you live in a low-income community. Free home repairs. The money for bikes, cars, and trucks. All electric, all U.S. auto manufacturer are pre-Trump laws. They just extended for another 10 more years. And then the CTC, the child tax credit, brought in the eligibility 
possibility for one more year. And that's $3,600 or $3,000. They got that in there as well. Later in this video, we have some more details about that CTC. But there you go. The first cluster, everything passed, still stayed the same, and they didn't really make any concessions for Joe Manchin on anything in that first cluster. The first add-on is the $25,000 for your first-time home buyers. Yes, that's a Maxine Waters provision. Did not get in there, but she got her other provisions in there for housing. And these were not Joe Manchin concessions at all. There were other people that went that housing out, and it got down to zero, got back in there. We first saw the first item of housing. Let's go to the second item of housing got in there the home repairs yes this is big home repairs got in there for the weatherize your home a paid leave <laughs> yeah pay uh paid leave this is joe mansions all over it paid leave was out it was out as as of this yesterday but guess what it's coming back in then family leave as well the household tax credit in there child care credit in there pre-kindergarten in there tuition free community college taken out believed because of Joe Manchin. And then the money to weatherize your home is still in there. I mean, you got to weatherize your home against someone. Uh, so if the Loch Ness Monster comes knocking at your door saying, why was I not invited to the climate conference in Scotland? Uh, keep the door weatherized. <laughs> Because <laughs> the, 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 the Loch Ness Monster is not very inviting, even if you've seen him lead the Senate in previous years. Uh, so there we go. Let's go to the second add-on of the recon. And that is the $250 billion for home health care. They got this in there as well. This is potentially where a Joe Manchin issue that he brings up today is rightfully so. I'll go over this in a second. Uh, actually, I'll give you a teaser right now what it is. $250 billion. It's one or two years. But the broadcast media is saying it's lifetime changes. No, it's not lifetime. But maybe this is what Joe Manchin is seeing. I'll explain this later in this video. This is the home health care. Totally free for your seniors and people on disabilities. Not $250 billion, a little bit less. Let's go to the third cluster checks and let's go over the status of those as well. So... This is the battle royale of, of the clusters. Free school meals for all. Got it in there. Then cheaper prescription medication. Got removed, then in there, and then today a lot more. I have the breaking details on that. Immigration reform in there, but likely coming out. Farmers, I don't know. Maybe out. Free internet, I think maybe out. Then the workers, independent contractors, I think that's out because of mansion. And then the dental vision hearing and the eligibility age. Let's go over those details right now. So first, the expanding Medicare across the 50 states, Joe Manchin wants this. He wanted it done so every state pays their fair share, whether Republican or Democrat. They got it. Then dropping the Medicare eligibility age, I don't think they got that in there as well. Dental, vision, and hearing, they only got hearing air in there. There's some resistance from that from Joe Manchin, not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, and then the immigration reform. It's in there, it's passed, but it's likely to come out this week from the Senate parliamentarian. That would mean the result is that there's additional money for you across the board. So that is your third cluster, which brings us to the exciting great news about that MSC IRS stimulus check. The situation is very fluid because people want to see the body of the legislation and they want to see it written the right way. Well, guess who wants to write in a monthly stimulus check? Chuck Schumer. In this recording, you're going to see in the second half that there were three legislators who got together last Thursday, unhappy with what happened on Thursday. And one of them was not Chuck Schumer. They were Nancy, Stinney Hoyer, and Claiborne, unhappy about the voting process. Guess what? Chuck Schumer, progressive, certainly wants it a little bit different. He's told Donnie in the last few days, he told Donnie's wife the week before, and he told Debbie Applicate that same week, and another viewer, that he wants to put a monthly stimulus check, IRS stimulus check provision in there as well. Liz Warren, Chris Coons, Bob Casey as well. So that is very fluid across the board. What's great news is that the recon is not closed. It's not a done deal. In many regards, one, you're seeing in this recording that my reporting for the weekend confirmed that there's a lot of negotiations of provisions going into the recon. Number two, you're going to see the statement from Joe Manchin as we dissect it slowly, that really Joe Manchin wants to see the language. And he's always said, this is nothing different. Uh, but the great news is you need to continue to advocate. As one viewer said after morning's LA, I'm going to get off the phone. I'm going to get off this computer right after the show's done. And I'm going to start advocating. This is the message from from the legislators. You need to advocate across the board, and it comes from 
the chief of staff, the number one legislator for the recon. They now have a total between congressional and senatorial offices receive more context of advocacy from the LA Purple Power than the number of American petition signatures in the American petition, three million. Everyone's amazed by the outpouring of touching stories. Now they have a better understanding of what the average America is going through this pandemic. They have heartbreaking stories. They have the voice of the people across the nation and you allied as you have become too loud to be ignored. Very, very kind. Let's read the last sentence on air together. The last sentence says, Please continue your encouragement for the continued advocacy as you have become the professional voice of the people, L.A., until this becomes law. Well, in the second half of this video, we have a lot coming up. But here's a preview. You know how I do this channel. I'm here to get you money. I'm not here to create dramatics. If I want to do dramatics, I do a puppet show. <clears throat> well, guess what CNN wanted to do today? They wanted to make it look as dramatic as possible. Joe Manchin versus Joe Biden, and he's imploding the recon. And then Pramila is saying something totally different than she said the day before. Oh, take it down a notch, CNN. Absolutely. Every single thing they were saying about this stuff was old news. The Joe Manchin comment today is repeated from something he said last week. They're trying to make it a new story. The Pramila comment today, not a new, they said it was breaking news. This is something we just never heard before. She said the same quote last week. I have it in my set. Do you keep your paper on set, CNN? So what were they trying to do? They're trying to make it Neen Leaks versus uh, Kenny Burris. They wanted big dramatics. You could see them, their eyes were popping out. Wow, this is a big moment and you just saw this on our channel. No, if you watched me last week, you would have seen it here. <laughs> In the second half of this video, we're going to go over why the Joe Manchin comments were much of nothing. Uh, the Joe Manchin comments were actually quite logical. A real deal will be happening for this recon. And the Joe Manchin, com the Joe Manchin titles of the CNN story. It says no recon, you can go home and we'll check back in you in a few years from them. not happening. This is what's different is there is something repeated in Pramila's comments today that causes me of concern because I heard it last week, I said it to you last week, she repeated again. I don't know if it's the way she speaks or word choice, but guess what? I'm bringing back Block the Road. Our hashtag is campaign is coming back. The price tag 1.75 heating up and then more programs are added. It was starting to be a really good day until people realized, oh, I forgot Halloween. No, you were dressed up as Mitch. No, that's really how I look. Uh, so <laughs> debt forgiveness. More debt could be forgiven. I'll delay details on that. And then we'll be going over that cola raise. It's a big evening. The president is in Glasgow, Scotland, and guess what? As he's in Scotland, he is met with a Loch Ness monster. I don't mean the guy from West Virginia. I mean something else. It's coming up in the second half of this video. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. In the second half of this video, we go over the deal. The deal will be happening for that recon, but what did the president do and not do with Joe Manchin? I have the latest details then. LA told you so, block the roads because Jalapal may be calling the vote on the roads and bridges this week. What went on? 
then and the exciting details the price is right 1.75 across the board and we could go higher programs in programs out we'll go over the latest programs and it's great news as no less than four of them could be going into this recon then the incredible details is that student loan debt is heating up another round of student loan debt for giving for given i have the latest details on that as well and then cola raise that cola raise is being followed up by fifth stimulus those details and more as we go into a big evening of evenings l8 and the excitement starts right here and this is our light coming up next is evening's countdown and then the big three-hour programming block continues with stream stimulus binge watch three hours of shows evenings evenings countdown and stream stimulus then we go into a programming block of shows at 7 8 9 10 11 30 tonight across the board and with that let's go over the incredible details that's unfolding today with bernie the president and joe well, it was a day unlike any other that started really quite great, as we saw no less than three programs added to that recon, potentially four. And then we had a very peculiar press conference that came from Joe Manchin. I'll have all those details starting right now. We will start first with the Joe Manchin press conference and the Pramila comments that followed and the President's comments. The president, as you know, is overseas. And being overseas, you can't control the optics of the situation. So guess who held, held a press conference today? Joe Manchin. And he held the press conference with no comments. Share something in common with me. No comments allowed. And Joe Manchin held a press conference to say, I want to see the legislative text of the recon. Because when I see the legislative text of the recon, I know what I'm agreeing to. Well, that's what he said last week. So what's the big deal here? There is no big deal. I have never seen a press conference that if you read the quotes and you leave out one sentence, it means something totally different than if you read the whole quote. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read the whole quote for you. Joe Manchin called a press conference today, and he said that um, there are provisions there that are at issue, and the provisions need to be addressed. And the way you address it is you actually have it in front of me. When asked about the situation, Joe Manchin said, you know what? Um, when asked about the situation the last few days, he said, I need to see the legislative tax. So what did he say today? I need to see the legislative tax. And he changed? No, really. Not really. I'm open to supporting a final bill, meaning I'm open to doing a recon that helps move our country forward. But I'm equally open to voting against a bill that hosts our, our country. And as the more details outline the basic framework, our release, framework is keyword, what I see is games and gimmicks that are being used to make the real cost of the so-called $1.75 trillion bill estimated to be twice as high as the program's extended or made permanent. So he's saying that uh, they are... Uh, that he needs to see the legislative tax because he's confused. Simply put, I will not support a bill that is consequential without thoroughly understanding the impact that I have on our national debts, debt or economy, or more importantly, the American people. First sentence, let's read the next sentence. But to be clear, I will not support the recon without knowing the bill of how, what would of seeing the bill, how it would impact our economy and our economy. We won't know that until we work through the text. Anything to worry about? No. This is what he said last week. This is what Chris Coons, Joe Biden's close confidant, says. Legislators always say the same thing. I need to see the tax. I won't agree to it at all until I see the tax. And he says, I need to see the tax. Same thing he said last week. So what did broadcast media do? He tried. To, they tried to turn it into a Kardashian fight because they like dramatics. They like uh, apples and oranges. They like good cop and bad cop. And they wanted to make it look like it was a bloodbath that Joe Manchin was blocking the recon. Not happening. That Joe Manchin wasn't agreeing to the recon. Not what he says. He just says, I need to see the legislative tax because until you see the legislative tax, I don't know what I'm agreeing to. And he said that last week. And guess who also said that? The progressives. So am I worried about this comment from the from Joe Manchin? No, not at all. What I am worried about is the broadcast media. Because if you read one sentence and don't read the other sentence with it, it means something totally different. Let's look at what happens here. I will not support the recon without knowing how the bill would impact our debt and our economy. We won't know that until we work through the tax. Now, if you don't read the second sentence, he says, it sounds like he's just waiting five more months. He gets more economic data. You read the second sentence, you realize, wait, he just wants to see the text of the legislation pretty easy. That's what Chris Kuhn says all legislators always do. It's Pramila, however, that I'm a little bit more concerned about. I'll be turning to her in a second. So the day continued good as it started very peculiar in the midday with the provisions of the recon and getting bigger and bolder. Let's go over all the details starting right now. What's important to know is that that recon um, has a lot of provisions in it and more provisions are being added across the board. A deal will be happening, and what happened today? Well, we learned 
that negotiations continued over the weekend. We had started on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday by seeing one, two, and then a dozen legislators coming forward and say, I'm making changes. But let's go with the big add-ons happening tonight. New programs being added to the rink on tonight. It's great news. Here we go. We have Murphy. We have Warren, Sanders, Klobuchar, Kelly, and Pallone. All negotiation Thursday for the inclusion of that Medicare expansion. Sources close to the negotiations say that Pelosi and Sinema were part of the negotiations and the White House. Bernie Sanders said, I spent all day Saturday working on the issue, and as soon as I'm out of the studio, I'm going to go back and get on the phone and start making more calls and make sure we have it in there. That's true Purple Power advocacy. Then Pallone was very bullish on the situation, says we're very close to a deal. I think we're going to get this bill negotiated, and the prices are going to make big terms for the American people. Pallone said, uh, we've come a long way on the policy, but Peter says we still have to make sure we have the 50 votes. What is happening for this? So we had prescription medication out on Thursday, now likely coming back in. Before On Wednesday, it was in with Medicare Part B. Then it was out on Thursday. Today, it's coming back in with not just Medicare Part B, but also Medicare Part D. And also with negotiations and rebates, a source says close to the negotiations, it'll look like H.R. 3, which was a big house bill that provided a lot of money for expansion of these benefits. Number two, immigration reform is in the Raycon, but it's likely coming out. The Senate parliamentarian is set to rule on it and was likely to rule against it. And if she does, that means that provision's going out and it's going somewhere else. Paid leave. Guess what's happening with that? Well, paid leave is likely to potentially go back in there. This is a mansion issue that he doesn't particularly like. But that's not to say it can't get in there. Mansion has been the recipient of advocacy get for it since September in his home state from organizations. And now Mansion's concern is that we can't spend too much money. At some point, you have to spend the money because you have to be competitive on the global landscape. Other corporations in other countries offer this because guess what? We're the only modern country that doesn't offer paid leave. Chris and Gilliband and Patty Murphy says it's downright shameful that America is the only developed country where working people are not guaranteed paid leave if they have a child seriously ill or need to take care of a loved one. And I think we've made it definitely clear we need to keep on fine to get paid leave included. Great news also on SALT. SALT is now likely to go in. It was out, and I told you on Friday, that Gothenheimer was putting that provision in there. Breaking news tonight is that Gothenheimer says if it's not in there, he's voting against the recon. Well, it will get in there. That is lifting the cap on the state tax and a local deduction for SALT. And that is uh, a provision that the Goth gang, that's what they're called, is going to ensure they get them in there. Wow. So that is all incredible great news in a week in which people were told there is big items missing from this recon. And those comments came from Bernie, who initially said the recon has big gaps. On the weekend, we had Ron Wyden say it's not done until the Senate acts. And then Ron Wyden say it, we need a significant amount of work. Chris Kuhn saying the bill will get changed. There's dozens of proposals. Jalapal saying she got text messages all weekend long to negotiate on the provisions. Something to clarify tonight is that the House members at this point are not really doing the negotiations. They're doing the procedural aspect. So the senators are actually negotiating, but they're giving Jalapal a rundown of what's happening amongst them. AOC says she's willing to see negotiations continue, and we need a little bit more than an IOU from Sinema and Mansion. Stable now says um, she expects more negotiations, and you still expect that if Chuck Schumer loses that ruling on immigration with the parliamentarian. Murphy also said he's a Democrat Connecticut uh, senator, says my impression changes are happening across the board. Which brings us to the very peculiar part of the equation tonight is block the road. I'm bringing block the road back as our social media campaign just to be cautious. I'm really unclear about the situation. Last week I told you there was a comment by Pramila that said that uh, she would... Uh, be ready to have the roads and bridges and the recon ready for vote this week. I said, hmm, interesting. Then, you saw it on Afternoon's LA right before this recording, the breaking news is that Pramila and Ron Klan, the President's Chief of Staff, blocked the roads and bridges from going for a vote last Thursday. And that the senators now say that the roads and bridges would never go for a vote in the House until the recon passes the Senate. So what did Pramila say today? She said that strange comment again, and this sounds very confusing because it sounds contradictory, because it is contradictory. So let me slow it down. 
two bodies of legislation. Roads and Bridges, which has passed the Senate, is now in the House. Once you call for a vote in the House, it's done. It's law. Done. Recon, not passed in the House, not passed in the Senate. It has to pass in the Senate at least because you have to lock down the two senators. Sidney and Manchin to a yes. Otherwise, if you don't have it, you don't have a recon. So the notion was always to have that recon Senate vote secured and to use the roads and bridges as a protector for the situation by not calling for a vote. Over the weekend, Bernie Sanders made the very clear comment. I've been reporting on it all weekend long, all weekend long and all today that Bernie Sanders says you cannot call the vote on the roads and bridges in the House until after, after you first call the vote on the recon in the Senate. Pretty clear. Yeah, absolutely clear. So what makes this very strange is that we now learn today, as detailed also yesterday a little bit on this channel, is that Pramila was behind blocking the roads and bridges in the House last week and in September, and even brought in the President's Chief of Staff last Thursday. Ron Klan, who's the President's Chief of Staff, is very close with the progressives, very close with Pramila, talks with her every day, not close with the moderate Democrats. And she saw problems with Pelosi last week when she thought that when she met with Pelosi, Pelosi versus Pramila, and was told that the roads and bridges will go for a vote last Thursday. Pramila says, no, it's not. I'm going to block it. Well, Pramila did a workaround. She went to the President's Chief of Staff, Ron Klan, and said, Mr. Chief of Staff, Ron, you can't have that roads and bridges call for a vote. Make sure you tell the President, never say the word vote with the roads and bridge. So she got that. And that is when the dramatics ensued on Thursday, where Nancy brought the President of the United States to the House, to the Senate, and walked him down the halls of the Congress with press reporters and photographers in place. You saw the video. You saw the images. She thought that she was going to deliver to the President to say, call the vote on the roads and bridges this Thursday. He came in there, and he said, I like, I like them. Have a great trip. I'm going off to Rome. <laughs> Nancy was furious. She thought the president was going to say, call the vote on the roads and bridges. And this is where it gets really weird. So I'm going to slow it down. This is brand new on E! News LA. I told you the news cycle changes very quickly. The president left. Jalapal got her win. She walked down and she told the press, president never said, call the vote on the roads and bridges. Nancy did. We're not ready for the roads and bridges because the recon hasn't been passed. So... What happened was the president went overseas, and later that evening, Nancy had a meeting with three people. Ron Klan, excuse me, uh, uh, Steny Hoyer, herself, and Claiborne, furious that the president never asked for the vote on the roads and bridges. That was Thursday. That was all the way up to midday today. And I had recorded on Afternoons LA just a few hours ago that the roads and bridges would never go for a vote in the House first until the Senate first does the recon. Because that's what, who said? Bernie, Liz Warren, Pramila, and even Pelosi said that. Even Pelosi said, I need to make sure that the recon goes for a vote first in the Senate before the House passes the roads and bridges. Well, what did Pramila say today? She said, we're gonna deliver both the recon and the roads and bridges to a vote this week, as early as tomorrow. What? Wait a second. Wait a second. You call the vote on the roads and bridges first. That's not particularly the same thing you said 24 hours ago, Pramila. And why would you call the vote on it if it's not ready on the House side? Everything's wrong with this quote. Pramila, why are you calling the vote on the roads and bridges if it's not ready? Actually, on the recon, if it's not ready. Why are you calling the vote on the on the roads and bridges when we all said we weren't going to call it on the House side until the recon gets approved in the Senate side first? So what did she do? She basically did a, uh, a, a pass the buck situation. She said, I'll leave it up to the president. My job as a House member is just pass legislation. I'm just gonna pass legislation and I'll leave it up to the president and it's up to the president to take care of it. He's the president of the United States. I'm not the president of the United States. His job is to take care of it. Interesting situation. Joe Manchin said uh, today that it is ill-advised to try to block his recon, his roads and bridges uh for a uh um uh for for a recon he said do not try to block the roads and bridges during his press conference by trying to think you can use me as sort of a uh negotiating tool and he said don't do that well jollop i'll turn around and ride said i'm not doing that we're calling the vote on both of them tomorrow as early as tomorrow what as early as tomorrow 
Now, this defeats what she had said, defeats what Ron Klain did last week, defeats what the president does, defeats what Nancy says, defeats what Ch- Bernie and 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 also uh, Liz Warren says. So is she misstating the situation? Potentially. But I have to be protective. And so I'm going back with the hashtag campaign, block the vote. Block the roads, block the roads. I don't think the roads and bridges should go for a vote if the recon is not agreed to. And guess who's saying the recon needs more than a framework or an outline? The progressives and also Joe Manchin. AOC says that. So it's not consistent with even the progressive policy to say you're calling the vote. Is she perhaps bluffing? I don't know. And at the moment, it's just a little bit too peculiar. I'm going to go more back to the programs because I want to focus less on the strange game plan they're going over. Price tag 1.75. The interesting statement from Joe Manchin, which you're hearing for tonight on Union's Satellite, is that 1.75 is saying the program, it goes from here to there and it's done. And you're going to see later in this recording where I said there's something strange in the broadcast media's reporting of these subject matters, where they say permanent changes, permanent changes. I kept on saying, why they keep on saying permanent? I expect, I believe that Joe Manchin heard the same thing I'm hearing, which is why do people come down saying it permanent? I'm agreeing to one year for $100 billion. I'm agreeing to three years for $200 billion. I do not agree to this for 15, 20 years, and you just come back and get refunded every two years. So... What do I think may be going? This is my guess. It's just a guess. I think Joe Manchin is starting to see text, and it looks like it's $100 billion for one year renewable by this, this, this. So it looks like it's sort of like a down payment for the first year, and you can come back and do it for 20 more years. I think that's what he's starting to see, and he's like, I didn't agree to uh, I didn't agree to the sort of renewable open-ended thing. I agree to a, a certain time frame with a certain price tag. That is why, in his quote today, he called it the so-called 1.75. Meaning he's fine with 1.75, but he's not so fine with this. He calls it the so-called 1.75, the real cost. He says budget gimmicks and shell games. Uh, those are clear words for a guy who knows his numbers. He's not playing games when he's saying numbers. He's saying someone's playing games with numbers, trying to make it look like it's an open money bag that you keep on replenishing with funds every year. And he's not going to agree to that. I don't blame him because that's not what he, neg- he negotiated to. So let's go over the programs in and the programs out where we are today. And the exciting details is that prescription medication coming on in. The best bill since the 1960s, says Murray Sanders, but major caps. American people are sick and tired of higher medication costs. There's no language dealing in there, he said Friday. So before it happens, we need to get that legislation in there. He also said we need to have the vote in the Senate of the recon before we have the vote in the House of the Roads and Bridges. Now let's go over the provisions where we are tonight. First, universal pre-kindergarten. This is big. Um, This is three to four-year-olds. Uh, getting that money in there across the board. Uh, But some of the provisions that are big today, of course, are the addition of the medication, the the paid leave, and the SALT. I'll have more about those in a second. So paid the universal pre-kindergarten in their three- to four-year-olds, one year, access to six million children. Then child care services. Um, The child tax credit, this would be uh, one year, and It was said to be $3,600, $3,000 if you're at the same income levels as third stimulus. But here again, this is where things are getting a little dicey. I had said always that $60,000 is the low-income threshold. I had said that they were looking at $110, uh, but that then suddenly broadcast me and saying it's $150. I don't think that's accurate. But I can tell if Joe Manchin saw that, he would not be happy because that's middle class. No one talked about child tax credit for middle class. Here comes an example of things that could have been a red flag for Joe Manchin. There were red flags for me on the, over the weekend. The Medicare would now include home, home care services for seniors or people with disabilities. Got that. But here's a key word. Permanently changing it. Wait a second. Permanently versus one or two years is totally different. So I think that's what he's talking about. Is it permanent for one? Is it permanent for, you know, a uh, trillion dollars over 10 years? Or is it one or two years for $200 billion? Then we have hearing, uh, hearing services would be covered under Medicare. We have other provisions in here, like uh, the $150 billion of home repairs, great news across the board, rehab, improvement, and construction of those items additionally. Uh, here comes the very fascinating details about the big pharma and, of course, the 
money for the the uh, hearing and the vision of the hearing. Bernie said on Friday that the number one thing most thing on people's minds is that they don't want to be ripped off by pharmaceutical companies paying 10% uh, more in this country than other countries. And a bill must have real Medicare negotiations. And number two, he says the wealthiest country, and yet people have no teeth in their mouth and cannot see. Is that a red line? Of course it's a red line. Uh, and Bernie said that we need to have um, – we need to take a good bill and make it a lot better. So let's go over some of the, let's go over that because this is very peculiar. The Medicare plan B in there on Wednesday, Wednesday night out. Then Wednesday night, the president negotiating with Chris Zima, broadening the eligibility. And then what Thursday morning, no money in there at all for prescription medication. Tonight, indications Medicare Part D and Part B, and then could have additional vouchers. Good news, but still broadening. Then when we turn to the details about the dental vision hearing, very peculiar, as the vision is the cheapest of three items. Why is it not in there? The vision is the money uh, for eyeglasses and eye exam, $150 a year potentially for, for a person, not expensive. The three items is the cheapest three items. Why is it not in there? And hearing, which is the second most expensive, which serves less people because a lot more people need eyeglasses than need hearing aid, which brings us then to the dental. Very peculiar what's happening with the dental, which was uh, Bernie went at 10 years, and then the president said no, three years. Then they were talking about $800 of dental vouchers per year. I thought it was not enough. None of those three things in there. So I think this is what's happening with Joe Manchin is he's looking at the provisions. He say, wait a second, I'm agreeing this to, for one year, two years. I'm not agreeing this as a lifetime change to the system at all. Lifetime changes to the systems mean the federal government will be paying for this, uh, you know, for generations to come. And that you changed really a let's let's slow it down. Actually, let's slow it down a little bit. The recon, remember, when it was $7 trillion offer, was going to be 20-year programs. When it was $3.5 trillion uh, recon procedural passed, it was 10-year programs. Now, most of the programs are $100, $200 billion at one year. So I think what Joe Manchin is saying, I asked for this recon to get down to 175 so that we do one or two-year programs. Now I'm getting stuff that's sent back to me that looks like it's a 10-year program. It looks like a 10-year program, and you're saying year one is $100 billion and we can extend it, and we will extend it. Maybe they even have an automatic extension in there. I mean, I wouldn't put it past these people. So I think he's starting to see that maybe there's people playing legislative word games. What's very fascinating across the equation, and here's something you're only going to see on this channel because I go into a lot of detail, is that we had the... We had the negotiations happen Wednesday and Thursday, really ramp up last week. And then by Thursday evening, Nancy sent the recon draft of the legislation, an actually draft that Joe Manchin probably saw, because she sent it over to the Senate as well, Thursday in 24 hours. So how would you make those changes go quickly in 24 hours? Potentially, maybe she didn't. Maybe they just made it one year instead of 20 years with renewable provisions in there. And that's maybe what he saw. I'm just guessing. But that is the time frame of how quickly they made these changes very fast across the board. Let's go over some of the other provisions of this recon. And boy, um, here we go. Very strange occurrences left and right, which I've been saying for three days. I thought some of these things were strange. You now see why Joe Manchin, who doesn't miss a trick, when it comes to numbers, may have caught some game playing. Tax credit, this is the CTC, the child money. Uh, I have $60,000 as the income level, it's low income. Suddenly it's the 150, says broadcast media. I don't buy that. It was never even 110 during the offers. Free community college out. Pell's grant increased by 550. Then uh, the paid leave, not in there, really should be in there. It doesn't make sense, it's not in there. This is out because Joe Manchin. Uh, Nancy had it 12 weeks, everyone self-employed, all income levels a decade, $500 billion. Shows you how much they can do for, for, 10, for 10 years. Then she reduced it to four weeks, low income only, and only employees, which I don't like. It should be, you know, also including self-employed. But that was only $100 billion. $100 billion, not much at all. Joe Manchin said no. Um, here comes the next provision, which is child care in there. Clean energy out for Joe Manchin. Health insurance got in there. Great news. Housing aid got in there as well. Dental. This is a rental mortgage and uh, utilities. 175, 175 billion. Great number. In-home health care got in there as well. 100 to 200 billion dollars. Again, 100 to 200 billion dollars for two years, maybe one year, three years. But if Joe Manson sees it as a permanent change to the program, then you're going to say, wait a second. What do you mean permanent change to the program? 
Well, that is uh, where things started to roll. But then you have the SALT and you have the Obama subsidies increasing across the board. What is very peculiar is that there's a lot of strange twists and turns, and I have a lot of commentary, as you would expect, based upon the events of today. It's coming up in just a second, but now let's turn to some student loan debt. More debt could be forgiven, and the president has offered $10,000. Democrats should take it. The president has forgave three rounds of student loan debt so far. First, student loan debts for individuals who became disabled after graduation. And then the president forgave student loan debts for individuals who went to work in the nonprofit sector for 10 years after graduation. And finally, he forgave student loan debts for people who went to to work in the public sector for 10 years after graduation. This is city, county, state, and federal government. The Democrats should take the remaining $10,000. Finally, fifth stimulus is right behind fourth stimulus. And people always ask me, why are you talking about fifth when we're still on fourth? Because it takes a little while to get to a particular provision. And the great news is that the legislators are already pushing for it. House Budget Chair John Yarmuth says that force it by recon for those Republicans who vote against it, like Medicare expansion, and it's great for the mid-year midterm election. Fed Chair Jay Powell will be testifying on Capitol Hill next this week, and he's going to talk about inflation. And that's big for fiscal stimulus, because first, they're going to raise your benefits up under COLA, 5.9% next year, your benefits are going to go up. But then they're going to apply a new benchmark. The new benchmark's inflation. And they're going to apply that in December, and inflation is going to be 1% to 3%. COLA could be zero next year. And there you go, three liftoffs. First, COLA then a one-time lift on the fifth stimulus, and then the new benchmark in December. They're going to remove the asset cap, remove the income cap, and remove the marriage penalty. So love is going to win, and you'll be able to marry your long-time love interest. Finally, what is going on with third stimulus? It's still paying out. Viewers need to get additional rounds of it because the money is available. Rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, and more. Consider becoming a member. The newsletter comes out Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. from this channel. The newsletter features all the big money under first, second, and third stimulus. New rounds are available. Consider becoming a member. The, the, the link is under the video. It's at news. The, the membership link is under the video. And that newsletter comes out 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system and the LA Late Alert system, which is totally free. Consider becoming a member today to learn about all those incredible sums of money. And with that, let's go into my final commentary, the situation to lie, which is interesting optics, confusing situation with where things are tonight. Uh, Joe Manchin calling a press conference and clearly a little bit PO'd about something. Uh, and Pramila said he was. She has met him. I've never met the guy. But you could tell he was ramped up about something. I think in my guesstimate is he was ramped up because when he looked at drafts of the text so far circulating of what could be the recon bill coming from Pelosi last Thursday, that suddenly things they were agreeing upon one, two years were looking like there are 10, 20 year programs that were some potentially renewable or sort of a shell game, a budget gimmicks to sort of roll things over indefinitely. When he says so-called 1.75, he means it's not really 1.75. It's looking like it's 3.5. You just change the wording to make me agree to something I'm not agreeing to. Not particularly cool. Whoever thought that could work with Joe Manchin. You could work it with someone else, but not with Joe Manchin. He will catch that. Broadcast media didn't see the benefit of his comments. They saw it as a negative. I saw it as a positive. I said it as a positive because I had problems with the language when I was looking at the broadcast media's coverage of it this weekend. A lot of words like permanent, lifetime. Janet Yellen saying permanent, lifetime. But what's permanent, lifetime? It's one year. It's two years. Why do they keep on using the word permanent, lifetime? He must have heard the same words and said, wait a second. I didn't agree to anything permanent. I agreed to one or two years of this stuff, and that's it. Permanent is talking about a $10 trillion recon, $7 trillion recon, not $1.75. And clearly, that's what's going on. What's also going on is the broadcast media really loves the bloodbath. They really love it. Um, they just salivate at it. The president out of the sea, out of the country. And, and clearly, his biggest adversary, if they want to run that story, his biggest protagonist, his biggest um, uh, burden is having a press conference. And just not any press conference, not walking down the street, he gives a comment. He's calling a press conference in the Senate chambers and with reporters, with no ability to ask a comment. And he wants to make things very clear that someone was playing games with him. Mm. Mm. Not the president, the person writing the legislation. To which they default to Pramila to then have another quote. And the quote she says is the same quote she said last week. The quote he says is the same quote he says last week. But when put together, it looks like it's a bloodbath.
and ultimately nothing seems to look good in that situation. I think it's fine. I have no problem with it. The only thing I have a problem with is this craziness of whether and where the recon gets called upon for a vote. I've made this recording before. I made it in the middle of last week. Progressives are inconsistent with the messaging. First, when do you agree to vote on the recon based upon uh, or the roads and bridges? Do you agree to vote on the roads and bridges just when you have a framework, a summary of the recon? No. Based upon a legislative text? No. Based upon an actual vote in the Senate? Yes. Based upon uh, just a vote in the House? Unclear. It seems like it's a evolving door. There's a lot of kit cooks in the kitchen, but Pramila's comments are inconsistent with Bernie's and are inconsistent with other people's across the board. That's why I think it's important to go on hashtag, hashtag block the vote, block the road, because the roads and bridges should not go for a vote in the House until the recon is finished in the Senate. In view of Joe Manchin's comments today, someone's not writing the recon the right way. And the recon needs to be written the right way. Why are we getting teed up on the roads and bridges if the recon's not written the right way yet? And that is how we go over detail. Coming up next is part, a continuation of our evening's countdown, our evening's uh, binge watch block. Evening's countdown comes up next, and then we have stream stimulus. Three hours of show. Stay here. Each video takes you to the next one. Then we got shows at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 30 tonight. And with that, subscribe. 400,000 subscribers of YouTube record. I want you part of this incredible family. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like the video, two, 3,000 likes, and consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino, VIP. Stay informed, stay focused, keep on smiling. Smiling. Have a beautiful evening. Uh, say hello to Glasgow for me. <laughs> and always stay with LA for more.